Today, we are going to talk about what happened in Matrix 4, The Matrix Resurrections. Get subscribed and turn on the bell notification to get notified whenever a new video is out. The Matrix 4 opens much the way The Matrix 1999 did. Trinity kicks S when surrounded by police in an abandoned hotel. A hacker named Bugs watches the scene play out, and she is aware that this has happened before. But something is different with one of the agents who has been sent after Trinity. Bugs realizes that this agent is a computer program version of Morpheus. Bugs tells this computer Morpheus that Neo is not dead, and that they need to free him from a new version of the Matrix. In this new version of the Matrix, Thomas Anderson is a world-famous video game designer in the modern day. His most famous game is a game called, you guessed it, The Matrix. He based the main character on himself, and the plot of the games is the exact same plot as the first three Matrix films. We learn that Thomas Anderson has trouble distinguishing his game from reality, suffers from psychotic episodes, and began seeing an analyst after attempting to jump off his building's roof. The only thing that grounds him is the cute, married woman who goes to his coffee shop named Tiffany. Things start to get bad again when his boss, Smith tells him they need to make a fourth Matrix game. After a failed attempt to free Neo from this Matrix, Bugs and the computer Morpheus successfully manage to wake Neo up. Much like in the first film, he wakes up in a pod, but this time, there is only one other pod in the area. Neo knows it must be Trinity, who is also trapped in the new Matrix. Before he can save her, he is taken away by a machine. Bugs introduces Neo to her crew, all of whom revere him as a hero. Everything that happened in his games, and in the first three movies, happened in real life, and it has been 60 years since Neo sacrificed himself to end the war between the humans and the Sentinels, which happened at the end of the Matrix Revolutions. Things are different now the humans work together with some of the machines, who call themselves Synthians. However, not all of the machines are on the human side. There was a machine civil war when resources grew scarce, and the Sentinels are still evil. Also, programs can take a sort of physical form in the real world now, which is how computer Morpheus becomes a silvery man. Neo tells Bugs that he wants to save Trinity. Bugs tell him it will be extremely dangerous, but that she will help him try. Bugs takes Neo to the new human city, Io, to meet with his old friend Niobe. Niobe is now the general of the humans, who are working on ways to make life better in the post-apocalyptic world, like by growing strawberries. Niobe has apparently stopped trying to save humans from the Sentinels because she wants to maintain the peace in Io. A new power has spread, she says. Niobe tells Neo that Morpheus was elected leader after Neo died, but didn't believe the new power was a threat because he thought Neo had saved them all for good. It is implied that Morpheus's denial led to his death and the destruction of Zion. When Neo tells Niobe that he is going to try to save Trinity no matter what, she imprisons him because she believes it will endanger the city. Almost immediately, Bugs and her crew break Neo out. They enter into the new Matrix to find Trinity and set her free, but are confronted by Agent Smith, a program, and Neo's old nemesis, formerly played by Hugo Weaving. Smith explains that he is trapped in this new Matrix 2, which was designed by the analyst, aka Neo's therapist. Also, the Merovingian is there for some reason. Neo finds Trinity, but the analyst shows up and delivers a villain monologue, explaining that he resurrected both Neo and Trinity. For some mumbo-jumbo plot reasons, the analyst discovered he could create a very efficient, energy-producing matrix if he kept Neo and Trinity close to each other, but not actually together. When Trinity and Neo were actually together, bad things happened. But if he keeps Neo and Trinity yearning for each other, it keeps the new matrix running and keeps people in their pods. Working with a program named Sadi, a little girl in the previous movies, Neo, Bugs and the others hatch a plan to extract Trinity's body from her pod. Sathi's father designed the pods that were used to resurrect Neo and Trinity, so she knows all about it. She says that Neo's escape has destabilized the new Matrix, and it is now running on Trinity alone. There is a fail-safe that will reset the Matrix to the previous version, but the analyst stopped the reset. He believes Neo will return to the Matrix voluntarily to save Trinity. Neo goes into the Matrix to convince Trinity to leave, but it has to be her choice or else she will die. 
Neo says that if Trinity chooses to stay in the Matrix, he will too. Of course, after a fakeout, Trinity chooses to leave with Neo. The analyst freezes time and is ready to kill Trinity, but before he can do so, he is attacked by Smith. Apparently, Neo leading the Matrix freed Smith too. Smith and the analyst face off. The analyst tries to reach his cat, Deja Vu implying the cat is the failsafe, but before he can, Trinity and Neo reach out their hands and touch. This seems to stop the analyst, but Neo and Trinity are still being attacked by hundreds of programs that are swarming in the Matrix. Cornered on a rooftop, Neo and Trinity hold hands and leap off the roof together. They start to fall, but then Trinity begins to fly and holds Neo up. Trinity says, bye, flies up, and both she and Neo exit the Matrix. They wake up, embrace and kiss in the real world. Yay! In the film's final scene, Neo and Trinity return to the Matrix and pay a visit to the analyst. Trinity seems to wield an unprecedented amount of power not only can she fly, but she is able to slit the analyst's throat and then resurrect him with a snap of her fingers. The analyst tells Neo and Trinity that the suits tried to activate the failsafe, but he knew it would be impossible without access to Neo and Trinity's source code. Because they are no longer in the pods. The analyst tells Neo and Trinity that they can remake the Matrix however they want, but that the humans trapped inside will never leave because they like the comfort of being controlled. Neo and Trinity tell the analyst that they do intend to remake the Matrix and remind the humans trapped inside what a free mind can do. Trinity thanks the analyst for giving them another chance, and then the two lovebirds put on their sunglasses, fly off together, and the movie ends. I walked into the Matrix Resurrections hopeful to find a story I enjoy and find entertaining. I walked out depressed and baffled. If this is modern sci-fi I want no part of it and I count myself a fan of the original film from 1999. This was just a complete mess masquerading as meta sci-fi. No thank you. Also just because something goes meta and has a message doesn't automatically make it good. It still has to tell a story that makes sense with characters that grow and change. As with the original The Matrix, 1999, there's a great mystery afoot, with odd little clues everywhere. In this movie, ironically, a video game focus group asks all of the questions that viewers are likely asking, what's real and what's not? What matters and what doesn't? But at some point near the halfway mark, The Matrix Resurrections reveals everything. The deliciousness is gone and everything is about planning for the big rescue, fights, chases, and explosions. And without the masterful fight choreography of Yu and Wu Ping, who worked on the first three films, even these look painfully ordinary. The movie seems to have forgotten its original satirical intentions and just swallowed its own blue pill. Thanks for watching till the end, do like and leave a comment, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel.